welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new here my name is ifoma i'm a fashion designer and a pattern dressmaker i know you're wondering where is this ifoma <laughs> i'm behind the camera so guys i'm going to be showing you guys how i made this updated version of the sugar daddy rope and if you follow my channel you must have seen um our previous version of this sugar daddy rope the tint screen picture is the previous version and the pink um image is uh, updated version so guys without further ado and you want to see how this turned out um do stay tuned to the end of this video don't forget to like share comment and of course subscribe if you haven't let's grow this channel together and if you have any business deal for me or you want me to make something like this for you do send me a dm at the semi clan the link is going to be in my description box below so do check that out and now <clears throat> let's head right into this video here i have um 50 yards of two and i have six inches of length of two that i already cut out i'm going to show you guys how to achieve or cut yours so do stay tuned and yep yeah. So basically what I'm doing now, I'm measuring out um, my two length of 160 inches. Note that this length, this 160 inches differs. It depends on, you know, the length of the rope you want to make. And it differs because some people are taller and, you know, we do have people that are 5'7", 5'6", 5'4" and you have to work according to their size or their height so i cut that out like so and i'm going to be laying this down once we're done laying that down on our top line we're going to be taking the measurements of our top line and on our top line we're going to be having uh, shoulder line measurement and our neckline measurement after that we're moving forward to get our armhole measurement and 10 inches for small sizes and 12 inches of length for bigger sizes i took this to my table because why work on the floor when you have a table right guys <laughs> so what i'm pinning down there is um I took the measurement from our center front over there to the point I pinned down, which is 10 inches. And this differ according to dress sizes. So um, you do this according to your bust width, guys, your bust width measurement. And for what I'm doing, I'm just, you know, doing an irregular shape that looks like a trumpet just to give the sleeve some volume. And there's no specific measurement for this. Now we're moving forward to cutting our sleeve and like I said, there's no specific measurement for the width of the sleeve. We just do it according to how voluminous we want it to be. Next up, I'm just trimming out um, the body of our rope and cutting off the excess. Moving forward, we're going to be measuring 2.5 inches on the neck top line and for the length, we're going to be measuring 1 inches. Going in with our scissors, we're just going to cut that out. After cutting this out, we're moving forward to separating our center front from our center back just like so in the video and we're going to be cutting this in some V-like shape just a little bit not too much and slitting our center front open so you're pushing your center back because it's on fold you're taking your center back 
in and you're not cutting it through your center bag because you do not want any opening at the back of your rope you only want the opening at the front so we're just slitting it like so and if you're a bit confused about anything you could um the link to um the first version of this rope is going to be in the description box below so check that out and i'm taking out the pins now separating the rope and we're going to be pinning it individually pinning the sleeve individually this helps us to control movement Next up, I place the two sleeves on top of each other and I'm basically just going to be covering that out a little bit. Like this is not necessary but for some reason I love doing this to my sleeve. And once we're done with that, we're going over to our sewing machine and we're going to be stitching that down. So from the sewing machine, we're just going to be sewing our sleeve together in place and all the places we pinned all the way down to the bottom side of our rope. Our sewing allowance, of course, is going to be 0 0.5 inches, which is half inch. I feel the sweetest part about this making this particular rope is it doesn't have any gather stitch on the shoulder line and I really, really love that because I mean <laughs> it's a little less stressful and it has this kind of look it gives you when you wear it anyways moving forward once we're done stitching that we're going to place a rope on our table and what i'm doing is i'm going to align the two sides together like the two sides of your rope where you stitch i'm going to place them like so and folding it together again we're getting our scissors and we're just going to be trimming this just a little bit not too much the right side and this is not necessary but I just want to create some illusion on the rope and I'm going to be starting a picture here just to give you an idea and I'm doing this for the center back also but the center back is not as much as the sides moving forward to our center front and we're also going to be repeating the same thing cutting out just a little bit and we try to do this in a way that it blends in with the rest of the fabric so you're not having any sharp edge anywhere so i proceeded in taking this to a dress form to show you guys what it looks like it doesn't look like much but once we fix our ruffles and the neckline our rope will come to life On the neckline, we're going to be using um, a bias to turn our neck and moving forward, I'm going to take the measurement from that point 
down to where we want our bias to stop and I'm going to be pinning that So done with that, we're going to be proceeding to the center back of our rope. From the center back, we're going down just to that point. That's where our ruffles is going to stop for the center back. And for our side, we're going to be repeating the same step. Next up, we're moving forward to cutting the width of our ruffles and the width measurement we're going with is six and a half. We also use the same method um, to cut the previous version, so do check that out. The link is going to be in the description box below. If you're watching this video and you're not yet subscribed, like, why? Why? Huh? Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and of course, subscribe if you haven't. Let's grow this channel together. You're going to be cutting or repeating the same step for the rest of the fabric you have and for the sake of this video not being too long we ended up not showing you you know the whole process of cutting the rest of the fabric well it's actually the same method took this to our sewing machine and basically we're going to be gathering this with our hand manually There was no ruffle footer used in this video and we're sewing with our straight stitch. We're going to repeat this same step for all the ruffle tool we cut out. Moving forward to our sewing machine, we're going to be using our bias to turn over our neck piece or our neckline.
step we're going to be stitching our ruffles to our rope and basically we're going to be stitching this one inch away from the tip or the edge of our rope So we're going to sew this all the way to the other side of where we joined our bias and we're going to be flipping this and continue with our stitching so we're going to be sewing one inch away from our first stitch of ruffles I flip this over to make my third stitch and we're still going to be stitching with one inch um, spacing so the one inch spacing is going to be you know the difference between the second stitch and third stitch I was stitching this down and then I remember for the purpose of this video I went over to lay this down joining the two sides together just so we could get our center back and I'm pinning all the way from our center back down just for clarity's sake if you remember when we um, wore our rope on the dress form and on our center back we pinned so you remember that line we pinned from we're going to be pinning all the way to the bottom line which is the bottom of the rope moving forward we're going to repin the side of our rope and going back to our sewing machine and we're just going to be stitching Once we get to the point where we have our side seam, we're going to be flipping this over like so and we're going to be stitching. So we're going to stitch up until we have where our pin is.
when we get to the tip when i say tip i mean the part we have our pin for the side and we're going to be flipping this over and we're going to be sewing one inch away from our first stitch so we're going to continue sewing all the way to the bottom So we stitch all the way to our center back and we're going to be flipping it from where we have our safety pins and basically sewing up to our center back. So once we get to where we have our last safety pins, we're going to be flipping this over and continue stitching all the way down. Sewing this all the way to the side seam and we're going to be repeating the same step we did for the first one. There are other methods to achieving this um, illusion on this rope. So if you have a method that works for you, please use that. Moving forward, we're going to be sewing our ruffles to our sleeve and what I'm doing is I'm sewing at one inches away from the tip of our sleeve and attaching our ruffles just like so so we sew all the way around We're moving forward to attaching the second layer of our ruffles 
and we're still going to be sewing at one inch apart from the first one Once we're done sewing the second layer, we're going to be flipping over to the back and we're going to be sewing one layer extra at the back of the um, sleeve. After sewing on the wrong side of the sleeve, we're moving forward to the right side of the sleeve, which is the front part. And we're going to sew in the third layer of sleeve on the right side, which is the front side of the sleeve. After fixing this part of the sleeve, you're going to repeat the same step on the other sleeve. And I'm basically just attaching my label to the dress because this dress is actually for a client of mine. Now here's what it looks like on my client. This is my beautiful client rocking the robe for her birthday shoot. Yes, guys, we've come to the end of this tutorial. See you in my next video.